Hey humans, back again. Um, we're back with this F800 GS. Um, been waiting on these little vacuum pipes to come from BMW and they finally arrived. So I thought I'd just share the repair with you just for a bit of added info and possible entertainment. Um, I'll try not go down a waffle hole with this one and keep it to 10 minutes. Onwards. Do, do, do. Turn the monitor around so I can see if I'm in shot or not. Here's betting that the air filter is absolutely rammed solid. Focus you. It's actually not that bad. I've seen worse. <coughs> the problem with these bloody things is you have to take the battery and all this gubbins off to get the airbox off. It's all one big moulded bit of plastic, which is a bit of a pain in the cunniglingus. If you know what I mean. Get to the bolt I drop now. Aha. Belongs with those there. Right. Uh, Few more screws down here. Uh, it's not the right size Torx bit. That that'd be a T30. That one. It does look like when you start thinking you've got to try and get the airbox off one of these things, you do look at it and think, "Oh my God, what a nightmare job!" But actually, it comes off in such sort of big, massive lumps of stuff that. You know, it's only a couple of dozen screws probably and a few cables and stuff and it's uh, it all comes off in one big piece you'll see in a second uh, get these at the back here it just presses down onto the throttle bodies there's no actual oh that's broken off it's going on I think I've got everything. Uh, or have I? Uh, that one. Uh. Right. That. What else we got? Yeah. Can see exactly what the problem is. Ah. Hang on, something's still attached. Big old breather pipe. Ah, 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 ah. No good, I need some pliers. Right. When you lift air boxes up like this, top tip time. What you really want to do is what I'm not doing. So the moment you get access to the throttle bodies, you know, you kind of just lift the air box up. You want to get some cloth or some rag or something in there and block up the inlet straight away. The moment you can get to it um, for obvious reasons. And this bike is fairly dirty, so we don't want Dirt going down there. Right. Whoa, another pipe. My neck. Holy McMoley. Right. Let's get rid of that. Let's get you a better shot of what's going on here. Bring the camera around the other side and light it, and then I'll show you what's occurring. Right. So here's what's happening. Um, 
on the bottom of the air box here, this little noggin is the idle air control valve. Um, so it's taking air from inside the air box, passing it down this pipe. Um, and then if I lift this up here, see this little noggin here, this pipe is the pipe that goes to the Scott oiler. Remember I was wigg wiggling on that pipe in part one. And then there's two little noggins, this side and this side. Those two pipes that I showed you in the beginning, one connects to there, one connects to there. And they supply air to the throttle bodies when the throttle body is, the throttle valve is completely shut. Um, and then this little motor here, this stepper motor, idle air control valve, controls the amount of air the engine's getting when it's ticking over. So the computer has complete control um, over the idle speed. Well, let me just show you the dodgy pipe down on the engine. So this pipe here, see this split, that pipe goes to this little noggin here on the idle air control valve. Uh, so that's where the vacuum leak was. It was split there and then there's the other pipe, the other side. You get the idea, is that in focus? Probably not. Um, yeah, so I'm going to replace this pipe and this pipe and then we'll put it all back together. And uh, we'll show some <clears throat> data pids maybe on the diagnostic machine. Onwards, give you guys a slightly better look at these pipes that were split. So that was the one that was actually letting the air in. And then the other one, it's a good job BMW sent them as a pair. The state of that. Wasn't leaking, but it was about to. Anyway, onwards. Right, okay guys, just share a few data pids with you when we start this thing up. Uh, what are we going to look at? We want to look at the... What I should probably say is, in the first video I spoke about um, short-term and long-term fuel trim. This is a very early system and it actually doesn't give you that. Um, it gives you a lambda adjustment factor, which is sort of the same thing, but not quite the same, th same thing. So you don't actually see a long-term and short-term data pid, although it is actually happening inside the engine computer, if that makes sense. So... And then what, the other thing we need to do... Um, yeah, so if we look here now, this... Um, Adjustment factor is on one now, it was on, on 1.4 before, so it was adding fuel. Um, I don't want to get into that too much. So what we need to do is, in the settings, remember I talked about... Let's turn this row off. Turn this row off. Remember I talked about um, reset self-adapting parameters. So if we go into here... Uh, confirm, and it's going to ask me to open and close a throttle. Full throttle. Back to idle. Okay guys, that's it. Um, it's a fix. Chuck these in the bin. Uh, don't know whether you can tell from my mic, but lovely smooth idle now. Lovely smooth idle now. And uh, obviously no, no sucky sucky anymore. Anyway. That's a fix. See you on the next one. Cheers, guys.